Uh, this is from the American Health Journal. A uh, professional of water chemistry at the University of Pittsburgh claims that the exposure to chemicals in water supplies through showering, bathing, and breathing it in is a hundred times greater than through drinking it. So this is another, you know, some, some more good information. Chlorine from drinking water can enter your body in several ways, including, in, in, you know, when you're drinking it, but also you inhale chloroform, a byproduct of chlorine, when you take hot showers or baths. Most of the filters made today will not remove chlor chloramines. Chloramines is a big problem because it's something else they're adding to the water to get rid of more bugs, so they can, be, they can, they can, they can do more. But, uh, but the filtration systems we're using, we're using a mixture of three different carbons. We use a ceramic carbon that removes fluoride and arsenic, and then we use a catalytic carbon that will remove the chloramines and those byproducts, and then we use a coconut shell carbon that makes the water taste really good and sweet, but it also is very good at removing other chemicals. It says when we're showering in warm water, which opens our pores, because that's what we want it to be warm, we're not going to shower in cold water, which opens our pores, it makes us more acceptable to, um, to the chlorine in the water, and a 10-minute shower is a lot more damaging than drinking eight glasses of water. Simply stated, chlorine is a pesticide and is defined by the EPA as sole purpose to kill living organisms. So, I mean, that's, that's basically all it is. When we consume water containing chlorine, it kills some part of us, destroying the tissue of our bodies. When we drink contaminated water, the toxins are partially filtered out by our kidneys, right? I mean, our kidneys are our filter, our kidneys, our liver, everything that we bring water in through. And inhalation of chlorine is suspect to cause asthma, bronchitis, especially in children, which has increased 300% in the last two decades. I have a lot of clients, when we put their water system on their home, they would tell me that, I asked them the question, because I remember this happening, their, their children would have asthma attacks in a bathtub, because it's breathing all that, that trihalomethane, so it was very hard to breathe. So we have an asthma attacks in bathtubs, and uh, same thing with uh, when we did it for a lot of people, they noticed that dermatitis, psoriasis, and eczema went away when we took the chlorine out of the water because it was attacking the skin, its natural ability to, uh, to deal with dry skin. And so recently, scientists have thought that skin was a total barrier, that we were resistant to these things. But thanks to research, we, we know that transdermal patches, we've seen nicoderm, we've seen pain patches, they put uh, glycerin patches, they had glycerin patches on me when I was in the hospital that day, and that we absorb those things through our skin. Scientists have graded hydrogen atom for the number one molecular weight. If you look at the, the molecular scale, hydrogen's number one, and it's the smallest, it's the lightest. And we discovered that any molecule b below 3,000 will enter the skin. Anything below 750 will enter the skin cell, and anything below 150 will enter your bloodstream. Guess what the molecular weight of chlorine is? Anybody got any guess? I'm sorry? 27? 50. 50? I heard 100, I think. 35.5. You're the winner. <laughs> You're the winner. But that's pretty small. That's pretty small. So it's just, it, you just remember anything that's going on your skin, or anything that's going on your skin, don't put anything on your skin that you wouldn't put in your mouth, is what I'm trying to say. Um, here's a good example of a swimming pool versus home tap water. If any of, us, any of you in here owned a swimming pool before and you took care of it, you've seen this before. This is OTO. This is how you measure the amount of chlorine or bromine in the water, okay? And when you, when you fill this thing up with your swimming pool, you want, for your chlorine, this is the chlorine side here, and the ideal level for chlorine is one and a half, one to one and a half parts per million of chlorine and for your swimming pool. For your home, the ideal level of chlorine is four parts per million plus. So it's three times as much as your swimming pool. Now, if you ever put chlorine in a swimming pool, you know how much chlorine you need to put in a swimming pool to get to that number. So imagine how much chlorine is going into your city water. It's a lot. And, and what they're doing is, this is the reason why your city water doesn't smell like a swimming pool. Because if you ever get out of this pool, what do you do? You go take a shower, right? To wash the chlorine off. <laughs> it's, it, it gets crazy. But when you don't add ammonia to it, like the city does, the city adds ammonia and chlorine together and they cancel each other out and smell, but that's what makes THMs, trihalomethanes. That's the gas that's really toxic. That's why the breathing problems occur. So when you put those two together, you get, it smells like tap water. Yes? Is it bad to swim in a swimming pool 
Yes, but it can be changed. It's, her question was, is it bad to swim in a swimming pool? But yes, it, it is, but it can, it can be, there's things you can do to change that to make it not so bad. I'll, I'll get into that later. But uh, so, so here's a simple test. You can take OTO if you have it at home, or you can buy it in the supermarket. I think this kit would be about five to eight bucks. You can take your tap water and put it in this glass and put a couple droppers, drops into the water and your glass of water will turn bright yellow. It looks like somebody peed in the glass or something, right? So then, uh, not, not far off. And then what you can do is you can take lemons or rice or broccoli or any vegetable you want or fruit and you can slice it up and you can drop it in that glass and just swirl it around and dump it into another glass and it'll come out clear because all the chlorine has been sucked up by the lemons. So if I'm out, I'm, I travel a lot, so I eat out a lot. So the first thing I always ask them is cut me up a fresh lemon, not one of those nasty lemons that came out of the fruit tray. And they cut me up a fresh lemon and I always put it in my water or whatever, tea or whatever I'm drinking. And I know it's going to absorb the chlorine out of the water lemons. into the lemon, just the lemons. It's the fruit itself that it draws into. I had a guy, I used to do this sample, I used to do like a, a show when I did it and then he'd come over and he put more OTO in this. He thought this sucked up the OTO, not the chlorine, but it was gone. You know, it didn't turn, it didn't turn yellow again. And I had a woman that was in one of the meetings uh, last year, um, Jerry Jewell, she's a, uh, a comedian and an actress. She was sitting up front and she said, Leo, so you're saying if I just slice up a bunch of lemons and stick them in my tub, I'm good? <laughs> and I just saw her last week in Sedona. And she says, I, am, I have been so afraid to take a bath since I met you. <laughs> and and uh, so we had gotten her one of our shower systems and she, she says, now I can take a shower and I feel great. So. That's just a little bit more. Now, Chapel Hill did a study. I'm not going to go through all this. It's way too long, and I'm sure you guys are getting hungry. But Chapel Hill did a study that uh, talks about the amount of chlorine that's getting absorbed into the bloodstream. So they took 50 women, and they tested them, and they made sure that they, they didn't have any you know, chlorine in their blood, in their serum. And they had them drink. They were people who naturally drank tap water. So they drank a gallon of water in a day's time, or, or the period or whatever it was. It was in a, maybe an eight-hour setting. I'm not sure how they did it, but in a day, 50 different women drank a gallon of water, and they test their blood serum afterwards, and they had pretty much a baseline of what the chlorine levels were in their blood. And they brought them back on another controlled day when they had no chlorine in their body, and they had them shower in one gallon of water. Shower in one gallon of water. You know how horrible that would be? For, imagine all of us, how the showers we take. So one gallon of water probably take about 30 seconds, and your shower's done. Well, after they tested their blood after that showering in one gallon of water, the chlorine levels was five times higher than drinking it in your blood. So now we're talking about the gut flora, and where does that go? It's going through the bloodstream. We're going to shift gears a minute. Drugs in our tap water. Not many people are aware of this. You can look this up on CNN. CNN had done a, a thing on it. CBS has done a thing on drugs in our tap water. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the government is allowed to use, all of our municipalities are allowed to use 25% of untreated and treated raw sewage to go into our tap water because they know they're going to treat it with all this chlorine we just talked about and they're going to get rid of you know any any um, any microbes or something like that that's going to cause us to have problems but for years people have been pouring drugs down the toilet when they want to get rid of them because they thought it'd be safer than throwing them away and getting caught up in a landfill and somebody getting their hands on them so it was a great way of getting rid of them and most of us take medications most of the people today in the western uh, world take medications and we pass them. We don't break them down completely. So they're getting into our water. Now think of this cycle. If 25% of the water is coming from the sewage department, we're recycling it constantly. So how many you know, times over and over again? So the pharmaceutical levels are climbing. And when you watch the CNN report on this, um, in Philadelphia, I think there was 19 pharmaceuticals. In New York, there was over 21 pharmaceuticals. And I think there was 29 pharmaceuticals in New York, New Jersey. And there was anything from birth control to Xanax. And uh, so basically we're getting them back and those numbers are climbing. I just did some heavy duty testing for a, a client of mine down in Palm Beach and we tested for every pharmaceutical, every fragrance and I just can't wait to get the results because I know they're there. I've seen them before. And this is how we all feel after. We find out that there's that in our water. Fluoride, this is a big concern. This is, uh, this is probably the most toxic thing that's in our water. Uh, fluoride is basically just an insecticide. It comes from aluminum byproducts, steel, ceramic, phosphates, fertilizers, and other industries. It's used to kill rodents, causes cancer, lowers your IQ, causes apathy, and if you don't care, there you go, that's why. 
uh, used, used by the Nazis during, uh, in, during the war um, because it, 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 makes, it, it made the people not care. They overdosed them so heavy with fluoride and it causes sterility. So they, they, they won't have any drive. They don't have any ambition. And that's why they could walk all those people in, you know, it, with just one, one guard. Um, it's in your water, and uh, it's some really nasty stuff, and I'm going to get a little bit more into that. 98% of Europe has either banned or removed it due to health concerns. Germany has banned it. France has banned it. Austria. Switzerland. <coughs> Netherlands. North Ireland. China rejected it. Japan rejected it. Sweden rejected it, and Finland rejected it. So this is stuff that you can find online. You know, this stuff you got, from, uh, this information I got from the EPA. What's wrong with this picture? This is relative toxicity. If you ever look on the trucks, the big tanker trucks going down the road, they have a diamond on it. And in that diamond, they have numbers, or in different colors, in different blocks, right? And there's a toxicity, one of the numbers is zero to six. If you saw a zero, it's probably milk or water. Okay, that's no toxicity. And then when you, you work your way up, it gets more and more toxic. So if you look at, you look at lead, lead has a toxicity of about four, right? And if you go over here to arsenic, arsenic is more toxic than lead. It's a five. So lead is very toxic. Arsenic is extremely toxic. But look at fluoride right here in the middle. It's right between arsenic and lead. It's about a 4.5. And that's the same fluoride that they put in our tap water. Now when you go over to this slide, this is where it gets interesting. This is what the Environmental Protection Agency allows as a national standard that we can have in our water. We can have only 15 parts per billion of lead in the water. So there you go, way down on the scale here. You can have 50 parts per billion of arsenic that's more toxic than lead. And I'm going to explain why in a minute. But look at this one here with fluoride. 4,000 parts per billion. 4,000 parts per billion. That's, uh, that's pretty bad. The reason why arsenic is higher than lead is because it's in our pipes. It's in the pipes that are underground and they can't control it. The lead, a lot of the lead they've stopped because it was in most of the brass. The brass was, had a lot of lead in it and most brass today is lead free. And just by changing your wa old water meter to a new meter can drop your lead counts by a lot. Uh, old pipes in homes, they use lead solder in the copper. So that's an issue too. We ripped out many, many homes and replaced all their pipes so they didn't have lead in anymore. Yeah, yeah, you know, plastics packs, there's some really good plastics out there they're using today. They're a lot better than they used to be, uh, like, you know, they're better than PVC. And, um, and, and most of the time, pipes with water in them, they're not getting extremely hot. Now, the hot water pipes are, it's a different type of packs, a different type of material that won't let off um, these VOCs. So they've, they've, done, they've come a long way, a lot of it, because a lot of it, California won't let them use it if it doesn't meet a certain standard. And so California really had set the standards for pipes. So all the plumbing companies are meeting their standards. Here's one, one more on fluoride. It's in your toothpaste. And it says, read the back of it, right? It says, keep out of the reach of children under the age of six years of age. If you accidentally swallow more than used for brushing teeth, seek professional help or contact poison control immediately. It says that on the back of every vi bottle of toothpaste has fluoride in it. People don't read that. You see kids all the time, with, just like this kid here, with toothpaste all out their mouth. They're using Crest, two, three years old. Uh, a dentist had told me that, uh, a very good dentist, he said that uh, if a child was a si swallow the size of a pea of toothpaste, it could stop the child's heart. That's how strong fluoride is. So that's, that's a, stay away from that. Stay away from that in your toothpaste too. Commonly asked question, if I wouldn't eat it, why would I put it on my skin? And another question is, if I wouldn't drink it, why would I bathe in it? Because fluoride and chlorine and all these chemicals when they're mixed together in chlorides is a driver and it drives these things into your cells. Remember we were talking about molecular weights earlier. You're gonna get these things in your cells, so the best thing is to remove it. And we always thought that if we drank filter water, we had it covered, right? Yeah, we're wrong on that one. 